hopefully in this talk you kind of see how MI can actually improve um, and also hopefully better triage patients for the treatment. As we've heard about in the last session, um, the new adjuvant chemotherapy seems to do better for the T3 patients and then there is a difference between uh, muscle invasive versus non-muscle invasive bladder cancer treatment. So hopefully MI could kind of help you better triage patients right up front so that you know, may avoid a little bit of uh, additional tr procedures for patients. So I have, again, have no financial disclosures. And this process, in this talk, hopefully we'll walk you through the background in terms of how the bladder cancer is treated. Most of you have know, this, know that topic better than I do. And then also how bladder cancer is staging and also treatment relates to each other. And then we'll look over some of the literature results for how MRI could help staging uh, bladder cancer patients right off the bat. And this, as you know, uh, bladder cancer is probably the sixth most common cancer in the U United States, and uh, about a quarter of them die each year from the disease. And the incidence of the, plastic, blad the bladder cancer really has not changed over time over the past 20 years. All right, so in terms of bladder cancer staging, most of us know that there is the invasion into muscle is the primary determinant of how a patient is treated. Anything that's not invasive is treated with the TUR, and then anything that's beyond it gets treated either with cystectomy or with chemotherapy. Now, the important uh, decision point is whether or not the t tumor has gone into the muscle layer or whether or not the tumor has gone beyond the muscle layer. So that really de 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 depends on the level, of t it depends on the T1 staging or T2 or T3. And as we've kind of talked through just in the last few sessions, um, the bladder cancer treatment for the non-invasive uh, muscle, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer the treatment is really transurethral resection bladder tumor. Um, any residual is treated with intravessel BCG, and this really is only applicable for diseases that are up to T1 stage. For anything beyond, um, the tumor is initially resected, is resected through the urethra, and then this, if there is residual disease, then it's chemotherapy. Uh, this, really for, this really is for uh, patients with disease from T2 and T3 stages. Now most of us have followed patients uh, with CTs in terms of follow-ups. Um, in terms of de detecting cancer for, with CT scan, we do, the sensitivity is not too bad, it's about 85% sensitivity, 94% specificity for detecting bladder cancer. However, as most of you know with a CT scan, the, the, first, the fundamental mechanism of uh, tissue difference is not that much. So when you have a cancer which is essentially soft tissue in density, it looks very similar to your adjacent musculature. So in terms of deciding the muscle invasive nature of the, those, these cancer, it's very difficult to do on CT scan. And that's done with the traditional um, style of study which is single phase contrast study. We don't know exactly if you do the multiphasic study down in the bladder, whether or not you can better differentiate that the different invasive layers. Um, now, in terms of the, for CT, because of the technique, it's also very difficult to detect the flat lesions, or the lesions are TIS, which is in situ, or lesions are about one centimeter or less in size. Ultrasound and PET CT scan, they, they essentially do not have any role in initial diagnosis. Both all of you, you we all know that uh, PET CT scan is useful in detecting metastatic disease and also for following a patient response to therapy. Now with MRI, there are multiple imaging options. Um, with T1 and T2 sequences, these are the basic fundamental sequences that help us establish the anatomy of the, the organ itself and also of, of the tumor. Post-catalamine sequences help us better highlight the differences between the tumor and also the muscle layer. From the literature, uh, it is reported that about 85%, that the uh, accuracy of detecting the muscle invasiveness is about 85%, which is great. Um, and then in terms of dif differentiating organ-confined disease, it's really about 82%. Now, if your standard sequences do not help you, or if you have trouble deciding the disease at the level of invasiveness using the traditional anatomical sequences. There's also the diffusion sequence which can help us 
for the differentiated disease. Diffusion really detects the movement of water. So if you have tumor masses, they tend to be very cellular, so that water don't move very well. In regular tissue, the water can move along the plane, so the restriction to its movement is not as much. So when using these sequences, if you add these, the diffusion sequence onto anatomical sequences, you do definitely gain, uh, you do gain the, the accuracy. In the literature, with diffusion in, in conjunction with two rated sequences, you can have accuracies between 67% up to about 90% of detecting the muscle invasive disease. Um, and in, with, the eight, with the diffusion sequence, you also have the, the added capability of actually potentially assessing the grade of the tumor. With it, I guess we've talked about how tumors have a lot of cells. The more aggressive the tumor is, the ra more rapidly it grows, and thus it has more cells within that tumor mass. With more cells, then there comes the more restriction on water, and so the more restricted the water movement is, the tumor tends to be a little bit more aggressive. So looking at a few examples that we have here, um, on your upper left-hand corner, you do have the CT case where some contrast is in the bladder. You can, kind of, you can vaguely make out some of the tumors here. Maybe something here, but you're not quite sure. With the anatomical sequence of T2-rated sequence in your upper right hand, you do see the water being very bright within the bladder lumen. And this really helps outline the, the darker tumor masses that arise from the bladder mucosa. Now, with bladder, the muscle layer is T2 dark. So as long as you have a preservation of this T2 dark line between the bladder and the tumor mass, the tumor has really not invaded into the muscle layer. In the lower left-hand corner, what you have is the post-contrast images. This is in the arterial phase. So we acquire this image approximately 60 seconds after we give the contrast. And there's a significant difference in terms of enhancement pattern. The tumor itself is really bright. It's really enhancing, whereas the muscle layer is not. If we wait about another 30 seconds, what you get is the reversal of enhancement pattern, where the, the muscle layer enhances brightly, and the tumor is slightly less so. So in this case, what you're seeing is that the tumor itself is enhancing, but the muscle layer is really well preserved. You don't see the disruption of the, the underlying muscle layer on, this, on the post-contrast images. So in this case, this is a non-muscle -invas non invasive bladder cancer and could be treated with just a, the transurethral resection. Now as you move along, we'll kind of see another case where you do have a large mass within the bladder and on the CT scan, it's really difficult to differentiate between the muscle layer and also the mass itself. The mass and the muscle layer look essentially the same in terms of CT density. Move to the upper right-hand corner, we have the T2-rated sequence. As we've talked before, the muscle layer is T2 dark. And along this mass, you do kind of see areas where the, that the tumor itself has invaded the T2 dark layer. So you no longer see the continuity contiguous layer that we should, really should see in the case where the muscle is preserved. On the post-contrast images, you do see the bright muscle layer being disrupted. So this part is missing, and thus, this is where the tumor has invaded through the muscle layer. Now, this also shows the difficulty in detecting between the T2 and T early T3 disease. So T3A is the definition of micro microscopic invasion into vesicular fat. This is extremely difficult with, even with MR. Um, a lot, many times what we'll do is we'll probably overcall all of these microscopic invasions. Um, all right, and then on the right-hand side, this is the layer where you do kind of see the what, disruption of the muscle layer. So in that, biopsy, this case ended up being a T2 tumor. Um, Again, just emphasize that it is difficult to differentiate between T2 and T3A disease. Now, this case is if probably doesn't make any difference what technique you use. With the CT, you see a large mass that's way beyond the bladder wall. You would call this a T3B tumor regardless. MR, better definition, but again, with a T3B tumor, you probably won't see much of a difference between CT and MR. This case highlights the potential 
the, the different models in which MR could help us. On the CT, in the upper left hand corner, you do have the CT case where you have a posterior bladder wall mass. On the CT, you're not quite sure if it's gone beyond the wall and has actually involved the adjacent bowel. There is really no difference between the bowel wall and also the, the tumor mass itself. So it's difficult to identify whether or not this is actually a T3 disease or even a T4 disease. With MR, in this case shows that if you use a diffusion sequence, you can actually assess for the preservation of that muscle layer and also the serosa. You see this, T, this diffusion dark line where that nothing crosses over it. So in this case, you can safely say that this disease is still organ confined. And on biopsy, it turned out to be a T2B disease, so it's not a T3 or a T4 disease. And here it just highlights how MR could be quite sensitive in detecting small lesions. What we do have is a post-contrast sequence that demonstrates a very small area of enhancement. And that you can see the enhancement is pretty much the entire muscle lip and nothing truly beyond it. In this case, what we call is T2B disease, which was proven on biopsy. On the upper right-hand corner, this is a diffusion sequence, which supports what we have seen on the post scan images, where the muscle layer is bright, meaning that there is invasion of the tumor into the muscle layer, but nothing beyond. So this kind of shows you that you know, with small lesions, MR could be helpful for detecting them. Now, this isn't about a follow-up case. But I can certainly, you know, if we project that out, we can certainly say that if we're looking at recurrent diseases, small di the small disease could also be detected with MR, probably with a greater sensitivity. All right, so with the MRIs, what do we can, what we do have, we have a variety of sequences at our disposal. The T2 rated sequence and also post element sequences, they are primarily for defining the anatomy and also for assessing the a muscle invasiveness of the cancer. Diffusion sequences are also available. It is more of a supporting or adjunct type of sequence where it can help us problem solve uh, cases that we cannot clearly identify on T2 and post element sequences. As we all know, one caveat is MRI is very sensitive to motion. If you have a patient that simply cannot hold still, I would probably still say CT is a better technique because the MR images that you get will essentially be non-diagnostic for patients that move. So if you have an elderly patient that just can't hold still, probably still send them to CT. It may be less um, sensitive, but I think the images you get, it will be better and probably and more diagnostic. Now, MRI certainly is not the answer for all. Um, there are also weaknesses to MRI. This is a, a report from the uh, Japanese group where they showed how the, each reader reviewed the MR images and they checked the outcome of the reads with the, path, with the pathology. The ones that are accurate, accurately diagnosed are the ones that are on, the diagonal, on this diagonal line. What you are seeing is that for most of the cases, you have a huge amount of overstaging that occurs with MR. This is fundamental to MR, where if you di make a diagnosis, you're depending on the T2 signal abnormality. And with T2 signal abnormality, all you're looking at is really edema. This edema, it, in, on occasions, can represent the, the invasion of the cells, but most of the time, it will reflect just the water movement into the area. So as long as the body is mounting some sort of reaction, you will get some edema. And that is why the MR will make, uh, will overstage most of these bladder cancers. Um, and I do like to kind of point out to you that you know, in, these, in these reports, the T3A and T3B diseases were not separated out. Um, the issue essentially being that it is extremely difficult to identify microscopic, microscopic invasion into the perivesicular fat. Now, in terms of the T2, dif differentiation of T2A and T2B disease, it is also extremely difficult f because eat the layer of muscle, of muscle in the bladder is only a few millimeters thick. Each pixel that we have is roughly on the order of one to one and a half millimeter in thickness. So you're looking at two pixel difference, which makes it extremely difficult to further differentiate. So in summary, um, the bladder 
The MRI has greater than 80% accuracy in differentiating non-muscle invasive disease from muscle invasive disease, and also for organ confined disease. The higher tissue contrast of the MRI and the multiple sequences that are available could definitely help us better differentiate muscle invasion. Now, we do have to understand that MRI tends to overstage disease, and that small differences is also difficult for MRI to differentiate. And with that, I thank you for your attention.